Hi. In Ecclesiastes 5.18, the preacher Solomon writes, after looking at the way things are on this earth, here's what I've decided is the best way to live. Take care of yourself. Have a good time and make the most of whatever job you have for as long as God gives you life. And that's about it. That's the human lot. Is this also your belief? That the only earthly good men and women can look forward to is to eat and drink well and have a good time? Compensation for the struggle for survival these few years God gives mortals on earth? Do you review your life as purposeless with the final event being death and destruction? Stay tuned as we discuss the sum of the great business of human life. Hi, I'm Jackie Stewart, and I'm your host for New Life is Gift to Us. And this is your weekly Bible study that we enjoy bringing to you so that you can go through the Word of God with us and learn something that God wants you to know, to believe, and to do. Our text scripture for today is Ecclesiastes 12.13, and it reads in the Message Bible, the last and final word is this, fear God, do what he tells you. And the topic that we're gonna be discussing is the sum of human life. Over in Revelations 4.11, it reads in the King James, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure, they were and are created. And our second witness found in Colossians 1.16, and it reads, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So we see that everything came into existence through him, the Christ, not one thing that exists was made without him. So with me discussing the sum of human life is Richard Stewart, pastor of New Creation Fellowship. And he and I will be exegeting from Ecclesiastes 12, 13. The last and final word is this, Pastor. Fear God, do what he tells you. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. You know, I looked at our text scripture and I, I we kind of say today, you know, it's a lot of people say, give me the bottom line. I just want to hear the bottom <laughs> line. Right. Well, this is the bottom line, and I want to read it again, but from the Amplified Bible. And it says, uh, all has been heard. The end of the matter is fear God, revere and worship him, knowing that he is, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole of man, the full original purpose of his creation the object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun, and the whole duty of every man. Mm. It wraps up everything in, man, in life that man really wants. And, and uh, when we think of man living life uh, the same way they were living it at the time Jesus walked the earth, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, and this is not the way that we're going to have the, the, the life that we really want because all of those pleasures are only going to be for a season. You know, one uh, reason for this lesson was if you look at certain aspects and people in the world, that seems to be what they're about. It's not anything but about pleasure. And when you tell them something like, well, you know, you can live debt free, they just look at you blankly like, well, what would be the purpose of that? Yeah, why, why would anyone want to do that? Right. Because we're, and when we, when we look at our text scripture and it says the whole duty of man is to, to believe that God is and obey his commandments, well, you cannot obey his commandments if you are in debt, a slave, and a slave to debt. Because the debt is now your master, the debt tells you what to do. In fact, you know, there's a commercial that says, you know, my credit score is between 450 and 800, and people are very proud of that. The fact that they have a high credit score. Right. It would be better to have a zero credit score with zero credit and doing the things that God wants you to do. And also having the ability to do the things 
that you desire, because God wants us to meet our desires, but doing them in such a fashion that you're not in bondage to someone that's lending you money. Now, one of the things I like to point out is that when you read from Revelations, it says all things were created for His pleasure. Mm -hmm. And each one of us need to look and say, am I pleasurable to God? Am I giving God pleasure? Am I fulfilling what He created me to do? Because ultimately, the Word of God says that's what's going to happen, is what He intended to have happen from the beginning. And I believe when you read um, <coughs> Ecclesiastes 12:13 in the Amplified, it stressed the knowing part and not, not knowing about God, but knowing God, so that you know when you're uh, pleasuring Him, so yeah. that you know that's your goal. Yeah. The only way that we're going to know for sure that we're doing that is to know that we're fulfilling the original purpose and intent that He had for each one of us. So that shows us that God is God of purpose. Nothing that we see, visible or invisible, on this planet that is good is without purpose. Now, in the Amplified Bible, in, the, in Psalms uh, chapter 19, uh, not Psalms, but Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, in the King James it says, there are many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. That counsel means the original intent and purpose of the Lord says mm -hmm. it's going to stand. In fact, that's the definition of purpose, the original intent for the creation of a thing or, or the motive for doing a thing. Right. Now, in the Amplified, I really like this because it, it brings out one thing. It says, many plans are in a man's mind, but it's the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. Mm -hmm. Not just the Lord's purpose, but the Lord's purpose for each one of us individually. Now, that's going to stand. Now, when we look at this, it, it seems as though we've got a challenge between living a life that's pleasurable and living a life according to God's Word. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not, uh, uh, those are not at odds with each other. We live a life full of pleasure if we live a life according to God's Word. Now, there will be times of trial, but we will have victory over the trial. See, the, the, the life is not going to be without tribulation and trials for everyone. I think we're promised that in uh, John 16, 33. Right. It, Jesus said that we, in this life, we, in this world, we would have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. Now, in our text scripture in the Amplified, it said that if we will follow in God's command, it said it's the answer to all inharmonious circumstances. And so we don't, we don't have less by doing it God's way. We have more by doing it God's way. In fact, we live a, a life free from the frustrations of the world. If our plan, if we make our plan to fulfill God's plan for our lives. I ran into a commentary and was illustrating that divine purpose is not the same as a divine fate. Fate is a force where there is no choice. And we see in God's word that he does give us a choice. Although the event that he has proclaimed from the foundation of the world will occur, it has been established, we have the choice of participating in that event that he has proclaimed for our individual lives because he has given us free will, free choice, and he has sent people to give us the truth so that we can make a sound determination what it is that we're going to do. And we can go victoriously through that event, through that that's going to happen. Now, it's a scripture that I'd like for all of your, your followers to, to know, to write down, and to understand, and it's in Proverbs. <clears throat> Where it, well, it's actually in Psalms. Let me find it. Uh, Psalms chapter 30, I believe it is. Where the Lord, this chapter 33, verse 10. And it says, The Lord brings the counsel of nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the people. Now that translation is from the English Standard Version. But what we want to point out is if we make plans and they're not in accordance with God's plan, original intent and purpose for our lives, the Word of God says He frustrates the plans. And we go into different things. 
and, and uh, people get frustrated and they think Satan is ruining all of their plans. The Word of God tells us plainly, no, if you're not going and doing what the Lord has planned for you to do, He will frustrate your plans. And it's not in a punishment that He does it. He knows that the pleasure that He gets from you prospering is in you succeeding in the plan that He has for your life. Mm -hmm. And He's just saying, you're going down the wrong road. I'm going to help you to see to it that you don't go down to the end of that, because at the end of that is nothing but death and destruction. And so it helps us to know that if we will purpose in our heart to do it God's way, God will provide for us in a victorious manner. In uh, Ephesians 3, 20, it says, Now unto him, that person with a plan, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. In other words, what we see as successful, God says, I want far more for you than you want for yourself. And I like the way he says, he says, exceeding abundantly above all. So when we tie our, when we bring our plans to God and get the quote okay from him, then we will have good success and the, in every area of our well, lives. He has a vision for our lives. And if he, we will follow the vision that he has for our lives, he will provide the provision. The provision means it's for the completion of the vision. So as we walk the path that He has set for us, He has provided provision along the path so that we can complete the vision. It says it there in Ephesians also that His plan for us was for us to live the good life, mm -hmm. that He prepared roads and for us to walk along, paths for us to take. So He wants us in every area of our lives to be victorious. To put a pin in it, <clears throat> the fact that we have a plan and we, and we have consulted the Lord with respect to our plan and we have tribulations and trials, it does not necessarily mean that um, we're on the wrong path. It just means that there are things that we have to patiently endure and overcome. We just keep going along the path because the provision, it's there is provided for us to complete the vision. We don't have to worry about will He provide for us. Mm -hmm. He's already told us that He would provide for us. I'd like to read this in the Amplified Bible. It's Ephesians chapter 2, okay. verse 10. It says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. He wants us to live the good life. He prearranged it. He planned it. He set paths for us to walk along. Now the only way we're going to know what these paths are, what these plans are, is we're going to have to communicate with Him. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to talk to Him. We're going to have to listen to Him. We're going to have to question Him. We don't know in and of ourselves, but He knows. And He tells us in His Word what His original plans and purposes are for mankind. And it's next week. Thank you, Pastor.